Good morning, Family Church. This is Pastor Craig. I'm the Missions Pastor, and I'm so glad I get to join you today and uh, look at God's Word and share in an amazing story that we're going to present to you in a little bit. Um, I hope that Christmas was, was a blessed time for you, that you experienced the presence of God, not just the presence under the tree. I hope that as you look at this service and as you reflect upon your life, as we come to the end of 2020, there's been a lot of losses, there's been a lot of changes, and I wonder, what has God taught you about who He is, and what is He teaching you about who He wants you to be? And as you look into 2021, um, what will it be like if you were to surrender your life even more to God? What would it look like if you said yes to the things of God, or if He called you to something and you said yes to that? I'd like to start today in the book of Romans. If you want to open those up right now, um, we're going to get into chapter 10 and verse 13. And I'll give you a moment to do that. There's an amazing gift that we've been given this year. And we just celebrated it. And it's been given year after year and day after day. And that's the, the gift of the knowledge of Jesus Christ and the hope that came as he arrived as a baby during this Christmas season. And I want you to look at Romans from a different perspective, perhaps, that you hadn't considered before. So read with me from chapter 10, verse 13, where it says this, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can someone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. I don't know if you've thought about that scripture in a while or read that before, but we've just been participating in good news that started with the sending of angels. And those angels brought the good news to shepherds and to Mary and Joseph of a, a child who would be born, or a child that was born, of a savior that had come, a king perhaps. And so in this story, we also have Jesus himself who, who comes to earth to bring good news. And even though this birth is an exciting time, I'm sure, it's a precursor to Easter as we begin to look to what Jesus' birth really was about, it was about a sacrifice that he would make. And you think about the other people in the story, and you think about the Magi and others that went to visit and went and experienced Jesus and then went and shared about him. And our story today is not unlike that. In fact, if you think about uh, what it might be like if you were a Southern California surfer guy and someone came to you and said, you know, God's going to do amazing things through you. And you weren't following God and you didn't really know God and you really didn't want to know God, what that would be like. And our story begins with somebody that was just in that place, met a beautiful woman, they got married, and then God intervened in their lives. When I first got into missions myself, when I first got into ministry, it's been 10 years already, which is amazing to me. I was, I was teaching uh, locally here, and there's this guy who came to my house. His name was Chris Russell. And Chris came, and we were hosting, actually, a missionary family in our home. And he came, and he challenged me to be a teacher overseas, to be a missionary teacher. And at that time, my heart was not into that, and I thought, you're crazy. And as I look back, I realized that Chris is somebody that invested in planting seeds in me and I believe that that conversation is a part of the reason I'm here talking to you today. But he's also, he and Kathy, have been seed planters, not only sowing God's word, but sowing the challenge of stepping into God's story. And so today we celebrate God's story through the life of Chris and Kathy Russell as they come to the end of over 30 years of faithful service with Wycliffe Ministries. I want you to listen closely to what God did in their lives and how they were able to impact many, many people. And Family Church, you're a part of that story. So I'd like to introduce to you Chris and Kathy Russell, uh, missionaries we've been supporting since 1992 here at Family Church. I hope that you'll pause, grab a cup of coffee, and listen in as you hear what God has done in their lives through their lives and will continue to do today as they surrender this next phase of their life. Thanks for joining and I hope that you are inspired by what they have to say today. So here's Chris and Kathy. Hi, um, 
Let's start out with uh, how we both came to know the Lord. And for me, I grew up in Southern California, and our family was not a Christian family. Um, so I didn't really have much exposure to uh, religion and the gospel. And pretty much uh, was doing my own thing and got out of high school, started a uh, nursery business growing houseplants. And um, eventually, uh, down in North San Diego County, um, I met Kathy and we got married and uh, we had been married about three years when we felt like we wanted to leave Southern California and all the congestion and crowdedness and move somewhere out into the country with the idea of raising a family in a more rural setting like the two of us had grown up in. And so in 1979, we moved up here to Oregon. Uh, we ended up in Elkton and just before we settled in Elkton we were living in a cabin renting a cabin just outside of Eugene uh, a cabin on Triangle Lake which is just a short distance from Eugene and as uh, we were there and I began just really thinking more and more about the purpose of life um, we'd slowed down our pace of life so these kind of questions were constantly popping up in my mind and uh, I just really started to look around and see the beauty of the area in which we were living and think someone had to create this. It didn't just happen by accident. And so I really began searching for a meaning for my life. And it led me to uh, begin asking people in the area there where we were staying and living, uh, people who said they were Christians, uh, what did it mean to, to be a Christian? And um, nobody really explained the gospel to me, but somebody gave me a syllabus from a basic youth conflict seminar. And one evening as I was sitting in the cabin, I was reading through um, scripture from Romans. It talked about man's condition and his separation from God because of sin and how Christ came and died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sin condition. And by putting our faith in Him, we could now be reconciled to God and have a relationship with Him. And God would come into our lives. Jesus would be our Lord and Savior. And um, our lives would have real purpose and meaning, as well as a future destination of being with Christ in heaven. So it was at that time that I just prayed to myself to receive Christ there in the living room. And that's when I became a believer in Jesus. And um, so the next morning, uh, when we got up, I told Kathy what I had done, and you said? I didn't really know what he was talking about. Um, I was raised in a family who did not believe in God and didn't go to church, so I was never exposed to any part of Christianity. And so I just kind of watched him and um, we found a place in Elkton and we started going to church and to a Bible study and uh, studying the Word of God and different books I was reading to find out about things. And I'm not an emotional person, I'm more of a facts-based person. And as I read uh, different books, I particularly zeroed in on one by John Stott who, who said that Jesus is either who he said he was or he was the biggest liar and thief known to mankind. And that made tremendous sense to me in light of what I had been learning. And it was shortly after that that I put my faith in Christ and became a believer. So we started uh, regularly attending a little church that met in a local Grange Hall, and um, we were fortunate to have an excellent uh, pastor who was um, a very good Bible teacher, a man who really lived the Word, and uh, we were just very excited about our relationship with Christ and growing in Christ. Uh, and then one day, one Sunday morning, we had a family come to our church who were going out with Wycliffe Bible Translators as missionaries to uh, Guatemala. 
And they were the very first missionaries that we'd ever met or heard speak. We had no idea what missions was about prior to that. And during that presentation, I heard that there were over 7,000 different languages spoken in, 6,000 at that time, uh, 6,000 different languages spoken in the world. And that just floored me. I couldn't believe that. I thought maybe 500 prior to hearing that statistic. And uh, the speaker went on to say that of those 6,000 languages, well over 3,000 of them had absolutely no scripture in the language they understood or spoke. And I just thought, wow, how hard would it be if you didn't have God's word to read and to grow as a Christian, to become a disciple of Christ, to even really understand the gospel. And um, just re really made me think about the fact that there were so many people in the world that didn't have access to God's word. I love the story of Chris and Kathy because there's just such ordinary um, salt of the earth kind of people. And you think of their background from transplanted Californians who were up here growing house plants and they were new believers and just coming into this whole understanding of what does it mean that we're trying to reach the world. And uh, it wasn't too much later than this, uh, after Chris and Kathy had already actually gone a short time on the field, that Family Church got involved with them. And uh, we get to meet them and they're very quiet and unassuming and they, they didn't, you know, press themselves. But we had some friends in common and we were looking for some missionaries. And our simple criteria is we wanted some local connection so it could be relational and they could we could see them when they were on home assignment. And we wanted people with different parts of the world where they were reaching. And we wanted to see different kinds of mission endeavors. And so uh, Chris and Kathy were involved in something uh, different than what maybe you'd see as a stereotypical missionary. And so we began to support them in 1992. And uh, who could have known all the things that God would do in them and through them, and then how they have helped Family Church expand our understanding. Because the simple question I always wrestle with is, how do we make a difference around the world in our little town here in, in Sutherland, uh, in Roseburg, in, in Douglas County? How do, we, how do we impact the world? And one of the ways we do that is we invest in those people who God has called to go out and actually invest personally in those parts of the world. Uh, Chris and Kathy have also been a part of many of our great events where they've, uh, he does chalk drawings and so he tells a story while he's drawing a, a great picture. And that's been a wonderful event that we've used several different times and he's very talented in many ways and uh, he and Kathy work together as a, as a wonderful uh, team. And so now we're going to go back to the story of Chris and Kathy and how God took them step by step from Elkton to actually being involved around the world. Listen to the rest of their story. So we um, applied to Wycliffe and asked them if it was um, possible to join as an artist because um, as I looked at the different categories of skills that they needed, um, there wasn't anything in there for my profession, which at that time was growing houseplants in a greenhouse. And uh, as I found out more and more about artists, uh, I really felt like that was something I might be able to do, because uh, art was something I always enjoyed and came fairly naturally to me. So um, we applied to Wycliffe and asked them uh, what we needed to do in order to qualify and join. and. They told me that I really needed more experience in the field of graphic design and they wanted me to um, get some experience and then send in a portfolio and see if uh, I could be, would be qualified at that point. So uh, we found there was a graphic art school in Eugene at Lane Community College. It was quite good. and. Um, we could, um, I could make that commute from where we lived in Elkton a couple days a week to take the classes I needed. And after two years, I completed that course and received a technical certificate, put together a portfolio and submitted that to Wycliffe. And lo and behold, they accepted us uh, for candidacy into their uh, mission. And so we had to attend a 
four-week course down in Southern California in which they asked us many questions and observed how we functioned as a family and looked at all our uh, background history and things that we'd ri written about ourselves and about our beliefs. And at the end of that four weeks, they determined whether or not we would be become members with Wycliffe. And I, I remember uh, thinking, oh my word, I, I hope this doesn't fail because we <laughs> sold our business, sold our house, and really uh, given up everything, so to speak, to pursue uh, joining Wycliffe. And uh, thankfully, uh, they did accept us as members, and so we officially became members of Wycliffe Bible Translators in October of 1989. And our first assignment, after our support was raised, was to go to Papua New Guinea. Now, Papua New Guinea is that part of that small or fairly large island that sits above the northern tip of the continent of Australia. And uh, in the country of Papua New Guinea, which is approximately the size of the state of California, they speak over 800 different languages. It is truly a linguistic jungle. And as you can imagine, there's a great need for Bible translation there. So Kathy and I and our two children, our son Corey was 14 at that time, and our daughter Kara was 12. Uh, we landed in Papua New Guinea in January of 1995. And my role there was to work as the print media manager. And basically, um, I would be in charge of that department. And as a graphic artist, uh, I would work on the design and layout and production of materials that would help inform the government of Papua New Guinea of the progress that Wycliffe was making in the work of Bible translation in their country. And um, I needed a writer, of course, someone who would write the articles for which I could put together the printed publications. And uh, we didn't have any writers, I was informed. And so I turned to my wife and I said, Kathy, would you be willing to act as a writer for our print media department? And uh, you want to tell them about your role? I, I like writing. I really enjoy it. And I love telling stories. And so it was really the perfect job. And I had a nice understanding boss, so that made it even better. Um, I would interview different uh, teams when they neared the completion of their project to publish articles in the country's newspaper and to send home to the home entities. I was also involved in the National uh, Bible Translators and Literacy uh, Workers projects, so I could publicize those. I really got to know a lot about the work of Bible translation, the ins and outs, the pains, the suffering, um, what an incredible task this is and to portray that to people so they would know how to pray for them and to support them in their work. My greatest honor was to uh, just be a support to those people doing that work. It was really exciting to uh, be able to attend several Bible translations a year. Um, we knew a lot of people who had lived in the country uh, and working with Wycliffe, who had never been to a Bible, tra uh, Bible dedication, a New Testament Bible translation dedication. And we were fortunate to attend anywhere from uh, three to five a year. Can uh, I say something? Yeah. We would go by, by boat, by dinghy, by helicopter, by airplane, um, by truck just every mode of transportation possible in every circumstance possible. It was just such a joy to be there and witness the people receiving God's word in their language and to see the joy that it brought to them and know that for that people group, it was going to make all the difference to their eternity. Isn't that an awesome story? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news? Chris and Kathy were a part of bringing good news, and I want to say thank you, Chris and Kathy. Thank you for, uh, on behalf of Family Church, the staff, and everybody that has supported you 
thank you. Thank you for taking the, the opportunity and the seriousness of surrendering your life to go and serve around the world. We thank you. And I don't know, Family Church, for a moment, if you understand what this means, but um, I was talking to Chris and Kathy and I said, so in the course of your 30 plus years, how many language groups do you think you had a part in helping the translation work, helping the New Testament to get completed, helping with materials to help them learn about God? And, and the best guess was between 80 and 100 language groups, 80 to 100 people groups who'd never had the story of Jesus are now getting the story or have received the story and the Bible is being translated so family church what you need to realize is when you send a missionary it's a long-term journey and we don't know how God will work but when you think about the impact that sending one family out and people praying and people investing finances has an influence in 80 to 100 language groups I think you need to get a bigger picture that God is at work in powerful ways. And you know, Chris, Chris and Kathy, they had so much more they wanted to share. And just two things I wanna highlight that wasn't in our, our message today and their sharing time, but um, one is that they were able to go back to Papua New Guinea back around 2015 and, and they took their kids who are much older and, and they just had an, a great experience to go back and see how God was working. But what really inspired them were some of the younger people they knew who were now serving as Wycliffe Bible translators or working in ministry to reach people groups there in Papua New Guinea. And then uh, 2019, Chris and I, uh, we went over to Cambodia again. And that was, 2019 was the first time he had been in Cambodia uh, to see the Krung people, to see these, these tribes that we talk about. Um, and it had been like 2008 was the last time he was there. And he was just amazed to see how the church had grown from around 300 known to 3,000 in the, in the Ratanakiri area. And uh, to see him invest in people, again, teaching them how to use computers and teaching them how to draw, and to watch him not only interact with people that, that he was teaching today, but that he knew from way back in the 2005 time frame. Um, and there's one little piece that you need to hear. There's a people group in, uh, in Cambodia called the Tempuan. And this last November, they did a celebration for the completion of the New Testament. And Chris had his thumbprint on that way back in 2005 as he worked with some of the translators to help them uh, as they did their work in Bible translation. So you just never know what God will do. And today we look forward to the completion of the Krung, that Bible translation that's been in, in the works for a long time and I think we're getting so close. So be praying for that. And yet, and here again, Chris and Kathy are a part of connecting us to this people group. And as we look forward to the brow as well, to see them uh, complete that to the New Testament. These are all pieces of a puzzle as God works this beautiful picture together as we surrender our lives. So I hope that you were challenged today, not only inspired and encouraged, but personally challenged by what is it God is calling you to. I'd like to pause for a minute and let's pray for Chris and Kathy together. So would you join me as we pray uh, just to ask God to continue to bless them as they step into their retirement years. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for your story that is played out in the lives of Chris and Kathy. Thank you for their surrender to you, God. And we thank you that we could be a part of their story. May you bless them, God, with the finances and health and, uh, and energy to continue in their retirement years, God. We thank you. We give you all the glory for this story. In your precious name we pray. Amen.